Are you struggling in your faith? Are you pretending you're happy, but stuck in a spiritual rut? Are you tired of listening to famous pastors and preachers who make it sound so easy? Welcome to Broken Catholic, the number one Protestant and Catholic voice in America. I talk about the important things that nobody else is talking about, like how to align with God's plan for your life, because I believe this is where 90% of Christians get stuck. And I tackle the negative self-talk that we all secretly struggle with, but won't admit. My guests are brave Protestants and Catholics who share their struggles, their fears, and their daily holy habits that help them win in their spiritual lives. I'm your host, your coach, your friend, Joseph Warren. I'm also a broken Catholic and former atheist and a spiritual coach to Christian business owners and CEOs who are married with children. This show was created for you, the broken Catholic, who's pushing to get your spouse, your kids, and yourself to heaven. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you're just one surrender prayer away. Today, my featured guest is Martha Sue Yeary, and you can find her at empoweredgolfers.com, empoweredgolfers.com. So if you're a golf fan, you like playing golf, you want to listen to this show. Now, Martha Sue Yeary has been an LPGA golf professional since 1989. She's been tagged the most dangerous woman in golf because she is changing the way we play the game. As one of the first golf professionals to create an online golf school, Martha Sue created a way for people to learn to play golf that was simple, convenient, and easy to use. So she's pioneering uh, in this space of golf, which I think is fantastic. I love having rebellious entrepreneurial types on my show. And even though this is a faith-based show, Hey, we all run businesses and you know, we're looking to bring in incomes for our family and those we love. And, and I think the key is when you can bring your faith and your business together and really integrate the two and not live this bipolar type of Christianity. So Martha Sue, welcome to Broken Catholic. Thank you for being on the show today. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro. Would you? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Joseph, for having me today. I uh, I think it's funny because it's like, okay, uh, I was tagged as the most dangerous woman in golf. And it's funny to look at me and think, oh, I'm a 71-year-old disruptor. <laughs> um, but that's okay, because you have to stand up for what you believe in. And I found a way through trial and error of being able to get people to respond to simple life metaphors because they couldn't understand golf. Mm. And when they, they responded to the simple life metaphor, which is when they responded to and result, I'm like, wow. So I grabbed it and I did this over and over working with people that had had challenges and uh, had given up golf, thought they'd never play again, and actually we got them back playing golf, and it was so successful that I took it to a group of singles that I was working with, and I said, you guys are as disabled as anybody. Just humor me. Let's do this for six weeks, and let's see what happens, because when you lose your partner, you do go through a process of being totally disabled emotionally. And so they said, okay, we love you. We'll do anything you want us to do, you know? So, okay. And um, Joseph, it was always funny. Saturday morning, nine o'clock in the morning, they would show up at the driving range. Some of the girls had on their high heels from the night before. I said, don't talk about it. I don't even want to know. You just come on out, put on your tennis shoes and let's work. And um, six weeks, we did exactly what I was doing with all of the students that had challenges. And they had the same results and I went done. No more of this complex stuff that confuses you because a golf pro can say, I want you to do blah, 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 blah. And if your brain doesn't connect with that, you go, oh, sure. And the minute the dude walks away from you, you are totally lost. And I found that this lets you connect because it's connecting with what you already know and applying it to your golf game. It's awesome. Mm. 
I love it. I love it. Right. And you're setting the stage for this conversation and, and really where I want to go with this, obviously, because it's a faith-based show is bringing God into the conversation, right? Not just how did God use golf to turn your life around, but how is God using golf to turn uh, your students' lives around? And, and really, you know, how, how are you showing up and bringing him into that conversation? But before we go there, I really want to get a little background on you, right? Because I think it's very important to get to know uh, the humanity of, of our guests that we're not all perfect. We don't have it all figured out. We're human. We struggle. We're broken. Hence the name of the show, Broken Catholic. Um, so go ahead and share something personal about you that very few people in your business life actually know. Well, let's see. I um, started playing golf as a, a married woman. I was pregnant with my second baby. The first time I ever picked up a golf club, which is pretty funny. That's a, a whole fun story. And my neighbor said, come on, we'll go out and play. I don't have clubs. She said, you can use my husband's. So we went out and I pulled his cart and I learned what worm burner was that day. And uh, because I killed all the worms that would have popped their heads up, but I hit one shot. And that one shot, I actually went up high and um, uh, it was long and high and I looked behind me to see if someone had hit a ball over my head. And that really was the discovery of what makes a golfer want more is one shot. It's just one shot. So I, people that might not know me, I um, played at golf, but got really serious about it. And then later in my life, I got divorced and, um, was a stay-at-home mom, basically, and, and a golfer, and then became a single woman and had to uh, fend for myself and make my own name. And it was amazing how, uh, had God not intervened and brought this into my life, uh, these things would never have happened. I would never have been able to mentor, never have been able to lead people um, it's almost indirectly what he showed me to do because in the training, I have you give praise for everything. I had mm. people come up with a happy word and I did that because they were just being angry. First of all, I came up with a happy word, but what I discovered was that in the five ball drill that I have them do, and every time they strike the ball, the real ball, they have to say their happy word. And of the five motions, the first time they're like, she's crazy. I can't believe she's asked me to say my happy word. And this shot's horrible. The second ball is like, wow, that's a little different. The third ball, when they say their happy word, even the tone changes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, see that? It doesn't matter whether it's good or whether it's bad. You have to give praise. Mm. And with, let me, they're let not me jump in. The, let sure. me jump in right there because I think that's so biblical what you're saying right there. Oh, absolutely. Right? It's like in the good times, uh, BC Nation, or in the struggles of life, in the, the mountaintop moments or those valleys that suck. Right. You're just like, when is this going to be over? And right. you're looking at somebody else's mountaintop. <clears throat> sure. But you're in your own valley. And and really the way out or the way to accelerate it is exactly what Martha Sue is saying right now is to be grateful to God and thankful to God in all things, the good times and the bad times. And God, thank you for the struggle. God, thank you for this illness. Thank you for this cancer, whatever that looks like. Thank you for this financial, uh, you know, just struggle and pain right now that we're going through with my family. And thank you for that. And it's so counterintuitive. But when we as children, God's children, learn to just surrender to his providence for the highs and the lows of life and really just trust him that he's got us, that he's going to provide. I mean, that's where the peace comes from, right? And that's where God's power starts to show up and we get to watch miracles happen in our life. What shows up for you in that, Martha? Sue, Martha Sue. Oh, my view is absolutely that, uh, you, you know, you can look at, okay, this isn't 
working. This isn't, it hasn't happened yet. It's not here yet. But if you look backwards, if you look in your past, you can see you've always been carried. Once you are a believer, you can almost feel like, okay, let me see. I'm going to carry you through this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to carry you again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got to carry you again. I, I've always said I believe that God had a real sense of humor based on how he carried me because I certainly gave him a challenge before I came back to him. And um, let's go there for a second. I, I, I'd like you to go there. And uh, okay. because I think many of us that are listening to the show right now, we struggle. We struggle with <clears throat> one, trusting God fully. And then we struggle with persevering in relationship with God. Right. Many of us during the good times of life, we're like, oh, God, you're awesome. Thanks so much. And then, you know, things consistently go well. And then we just forget him. We forget that God pulled us out of that darkness. So talk to us about that. Wow. Share, share that story a little bit, would you? Oh, sure. It's, um, um, I have not had a drink since November of 1994. So a long, long time. And it wasn't that I had to have a drink, but if I had one, I might have 10. You know, it's like, that was pretty crazy. And that's an exaggeration, but you lose yourself. And, and the devil just goes, he, 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 I got her now. It's like, because your inhibitions go down, there are things that you do that the next day you go, how did that happen? Mm. And why did that happen? because there's no no that you have um because when your inhibitions go down the devil's won and so it's like i realized and god really planted a big one on me to show me um why i i couldn't drink anymore and i had two daughters that i, I long to see them be married. I prayed for years to have grandchildren. And I was driving back from a big event and I just had a couple of margaritas. It was, wasn't that I was drunk, I was sleepy. And all of a sudden I just could not keep my eyes open. And I was like, I need to stop. I need to stop. And I couldn't stop. It was like the car wouldn't stop. And all of a sudden, I had this vision of both of my daughters standing on the hood of my car, going down the freeway. They were real in wedding dresses. And I was like, you talk about wake up. I saw them and I just started praying. I said, Lord, get me home. Just please get me home. I'll never have another drink. I knew what that vision was, that if I kept going the path I was going on, I'd never see that. And um, got home sat in my garage, just bald. It was a Sunday, but November of 1994, that came to pass. Mm. Wow. BC Nation, Martha Sue is doing something few of us ever do. She's being real, authentic, and courageous. She's going public with her problem, even though it was a previous problem. Um, I think there's so much uh, power that comes from us going public with our problem because we now are putting it out there as an example for others. And we're asking for accountability from others as well. And that's normally what we're missing in our life is the structure of accountability that keeps us, um, you know, going towards that thing we say we want. Mm -hmm. And for you, Martha, it was, you wanted to see your, your daughters, you yeah. know, on their wedding day. And uh, God gave you a, a vision of what you were about to lose or trade right. in or give up for those drinks. And yeah. what a powerful, powerful, scary vision. Yeah. And, and he could have allowed you to lose it all that night, right? The entire and, future. Yeah, I believe that that's the, I, I do believe that's where it was going. You, it, you have a choice. You can either listen or you can ignore. And I knew that night that it was real. It was real. And no choice. It was like, okay. And people have said to me, did you go to AA? Nope. God healed me. I mean, that's the thing that I've always been able to say was that God healed me yes. of that problem. 
and it's allowed me to we learn from our experiences how to be able to help other people and i know that me going through that time frame that alcohol was a big part of my life i know going through that allowed me to be able to when i did work as a house director in the sorority it allowed me to witness to those girls to their chagrin actually you know what they were doing now, this is what happened in my life and you don't understand you don't understand the fire you're playing with but they listened mm. they didn't want to hear it but they listened yeah bc nation like so many times you know we're, we're ignoring uh the signs we're praying for signs and then God gives us the signs and then we're like, Oh, I don't like that sign. Right. I don't want to look at that one. I don't want to stop doing that behavior. That's my outlet. That's where I have fun. Right. God, you can't take that from me and I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> and, and, and God is a good father. And he's saying, my precious daughter, my precious son, don't you see that's going to destroy you. That's going to destroy your family, everything you care about. And I want to protect you from that, just like any good father would do. And sometimes when God strips us of that or takes that away from us or allows it to be removed through our own decisions, he's actually preventing us from walking into off of a cliff, so to speak, right, that we didn't see. And so many times we'll turn to him and get so angry and blame him and be like, how could you, God? How could you? And he's like, child, did you not see where you were headed? So I just turned to you, BC Nation, and I, I look, I, I speak into your ear right now, and I say, what are the signs or sign that God has been giving you right now in your life that you've been ignoring? And hopefully, Martha Sue is inspiring you, stop, stop, listen, right? And, and uh, you know, my previous guest I had on here is the famous Tim Story, right? And he's considered pastor to the stars. And, and he said his three-step formula is stop, mm. right? Look, mm. look up to the one who created you. Remember where you came from and then listen. Mm. Stop, look, and listen. It's a very simple three-step formula, but sometimes you really got to put the brakes on. And, and I think Martha Sue, that's what you did. You stopped right. and you went, yeah. oh crap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to lose everything that's important yeah. to me. I was like this. I mean, I was, I was still holding the steering wheel so tightly and I still had about 30 minutes to drive home holding that with my daughters on the, the hood of my car. It was, it was bizarre. All right. So Martha Sue, give us your top three tips or strategies for your life that have really walked you um, in, into deeper relationship with God and just relying on him and trusting him. And that doesn't mean you have it all figured out. You still have struggles, but what are your top three tips or strategies for BC nation right now? Maybe they're wrestling with addiction. Maybe they're wrestling with something else right now and they don't know how to stop. What do you want to say to them right now? What are your top three tips or strategies? The thing that has probably worked the best with me aside from just laying it all down and saying, God, I can't do this on my own. I, I just cannot do this on my own. I have to have you with me. And uh, that's the first step. That's that you have to surrender and ask for him to carry you one more time. I need you, Lord. Um, but the happy word that I the praise of all things, no matter good, no matter bad, because if you, really think about it there's an awful lot of times in our lives that it's not real pretty it's a little crummy and um, that happy word that i was talking about that i teach my students my happy word is wahoosers and you cannot imagine the times that i'm walking around saying uh, it's either thank you jesus or wahoosers you know but um it's talking to your inner child when you say that positive even when it looks like it stinks and you say that positive the holy spirit inside you is listening and you're saying to him okay all right i trust you we're going to get past this this is going to be good and so i say wahoosers a lot and uh 
um, there are a lot of times that that happens. So I'd say, first of all, surrender. Second of all, you have to give praise for everything. And third is, I love that, listen, because, you know, we can be pedaling as fast as we um, can pedal in our lives. And if we don't listen to what he's saying to us, it's like that old saying about the guy in a flood where, um, you know, the, a, a rowboat comes by, no, 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 God's going to save me. Then a motorboat comes by, no, 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 God's going to save me. Then a helicopter, no, 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 God, God's going to save me. And when he got to the pearly gates, he said, why didn't you save me? He said, why didn't you listen to me? I sent all those things. So yeah, I would say surrender, give praise in all things and listen to what his plan is. Um, there's a, a new song, Christian song out, uh, Torin Wells sings that God's not done writing your story. God's not done with you. And oh my goodness, um, it came out of nowhere. I hadn't, I hadn't heard the song and I was driving down the street, leaving the college campus, leaving that job that I'd had in that sorority, um, that nine years that I was in a house director and I was leaving the campus and it started playing and I just started sobbing because it was that God's not through writing my story and there's still hope. No matter how old you are, God's got a story for you. And uh, I may be 71, but I don't know that I'm 71 until I see my driver's license and it tells me that I am. You know, it's like I don't act like I'm 71. And besides, I'm a disruptor. I can't be, I can't be getting old. <laughs> I love that. All right. So BC Nation, listen to Martha Sue's advice. You know, she's got 71 years of wisdom. <clears throat> Right. Let's be honest about it. And and she says, step one, surrender. I love that because all of my spiritual coaching is all based on what I coined the surrender principle. And that's step one. You got to get your ego out of the way and stop trying to control all the areas of your life that are out of control. You got to give God those areas. You got to yeah. surrender the control to him and just say, hey, I'm not God. Hey, he is. And I need him, right? That's step one, the surrender. And then Martha Sue says, number two is praise. Thank God in all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful times in your life. Praise God in all things. I so agree with that. And then step three, like Tim's story says, listen, really take the time to seek God's voice. You hear God's voice in the silence. I've seen it with all my coaching clients. I've experienced it myself. God's voice shows up in the quiet whisper and you need silence. You got to really turn down the noise, the volume of the world in order yeah. to hear God's voice. He shows up in that humble, quiet place. So if you want to hear from him, turn down the noise in your life. All right. So um, let's get into, uh, we're headed into my favorite part of the show. Martha Sue, welcome to the confession round. This is where I'm going to ask you 12, uh, 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. It's just for fun. Don't overthink it. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Before we go there, BC Nation, we're speaking with Martha Sue Yeary, and she runs an amazing online uh, school for golfers, and you can find her at empoweredgolfers.com. That's empoweredgolfers.com. All right, Martha, my first question to you, what's your favorite thing about God? I think probably the uh, most important to me is that he died for me. Even me, as bad as I was, he died for me. Mm. That's, that's that... You know, he sent his son in human form to die for me, even as bad as I was. Uh, that was amazing. Yeah. You know, worthiness is the number one thing my female clients struggle with. Sure. Worthiness. And, and you just spoke to it like, wow, God did that for me. Yeah. That I am worthy. Yes, BC Nation, you are worthy. Why? Not because you think so. Not because the world think so because God said so. Amen. That's the only reason because God says so. Your brain doesn't need to make sense of it. You don't need the big why. You just got to trust God said you're worthy, therefore you're worthy. And just have the faith to believe him that he doesn't lie. 
And I just wanted to give you that gift, BC Nation. All right, next question. What's your least favorite thing about God? Well, I think probably um, for me, it's, um, I know he's always watching. It's like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I can't have, I don't need to have that extra piece of uh, cake or another dip of ice cream or, you know, to not have a drink because I don't do that. But it's like, it's kind of like this 24 seven accountability. You know, he's always watching. It's like, no, he's my daddy. I can't disappoint him. That's exactly it. So it's not big brother. It's big daddy in the sky. That's right. That's right? Right. Big daddy in the sky watching. What are you most afraid of? I think right now, even though I'm a 71 year old disruptor, I think right now there is a, because we have no promise of tomorrow, you know, God can be coming back tomorrow and, and uh, then we'll all be rejoicing. But my biggest fear is that the plan that he has for me, where I see the writing on the wall, I believe what he has planned for me is to bring to fruition the golf plans that he created. I, I just, kind of, there's a little twinge of me that's like at 71, is it going to happen before he takes me home? Mm. And I want to be able to leave a legacy for my grandsons. And, uh, you know, there's a little twinge of, is it going to happen before he takes me home? So I can see it. I can watch my grandsons be, oh, Gigi, you did this for us. Mm. You know? A yeah, bit I, do. There. I get that one. And Martha Sue, let me uh, just put you at ease. God called Moses to lead <laughs> his people out of Egypt at age 80. Oh, yeah. Eight zero. Okay. So you got a good nine years, girl. So okay. I got <laughs> nine right. years before we really get started, right? There you go. <laughs> what did you spend way too much time doing in your 20s? Um, probably. I didn't drink then. Well, later in my 20s, I guess I did. I would say probably uh, way too much time was um, playing golf poorly. That maybe is what it was. <laughs> Got it. What not, secret? Not, not fixing it. Not fixing it. Sure. What secret fear do you have about people? Um, there's a little bit of me that somebody that's two faced says one thing to me and then they turn and they go a different direction and I've believed them. So I'm a Pollyanna. When somebody says something to me, I was, oh, okay. I, I, yeah. That's because I'm a believer. I want to believe people. Mm, got you it. Know? What do you, I believe we all struggle with something. What are you struggling with right now, whether it be professionally or personally, if you were just being real with BC nation, what are you currently struggling with? The struggle that I have right now is that My jobs at that point, even desires of my heart are building the relaunch of my golf school in this high techy version of a platform that's an e-school. Um, the fear that I have right now, the, the problem that I have is, can I do it? You know, mm -hmm. there's no other support coming in. And so I have to make it happen. I believe it will happen. And, um, Thankfully, right now, in order to make this happen, I'm actually staying with part of the time with one daughter, part of the time with another daughter, and that's a whole new life. Uh, it's 71, but it allows me to be close and upfront with my grandchildren, but mm. they need their space, and so do I. So the hard part I'm dealing with right now is the getting the school up to a point that people go, man, that's the best thing since sliced bread. I've got to have it. Love it. Got it. What, what do you wish you had learned sooner about God? Mm. <clears throat> I think I grew up as a Christian. There was no doubt that I loved God. There was no doubt at all. But when I hit those uh, early married years and um, drifted away, I think if I'd learned earlier that God was always watching, you know, if that accountability part had been there. I don't think the things that happened in my life would have happened. 
because I'd have had somebody watching me that was watching me, but I would have been worried about it. Mm. Yeah, I get that. What's a new habit you want to form? Mm. I think more quiet time. More quiet time. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, a great more one. Quiet time. What's a bad habit you want to break? Um, being like, uh, is it Dory or Dora? You know, when uh, I'm so totally focused on what I'm doing and then there's a disruption that comes and you go over here and you take care of that disruption. It's kind of hard not to do when you're living in somebody's home and you've got kids that are there. But um, I would like to be more focused. Mm. Yeah, I get that. And last question, if you could come back to life after you died, look your family, your friends, your daughters, your grandkids in the eye and give them only one piece of advice, what would you say to them? Oh, wow. Well, I think probably, um, you know, it's not mommy and daddy that are watching you there. You were a gift that were given to mommy and daddy but God's watching everything that we do and everything's real. I can tell you, I've been there. There's gold everywhere. I'm, I've been able to talk to Jesus. I'm, I'm, it's all real, but he's watching. And so you need to remember that when you start to do something, you need to know that your heavenly father is watching you and don't do it. Mm. Amen to that, BC Nation. Any final wisdom? What's the one thing you want my listener to know about having a relationship with God versus not? Oh, I, oh wow. I can't even imagine not having a relationship with um, Papa God. I just, I can't even imagine life being solo and um, solo being not having that relationship. Um I guess the advice would be is when you're lonely, you're lonely because you don't have that relationship. You just need to open up and listen to what God has to say to you. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to come and accept that he is your personal savior and that you don't need to go through life alone. You need that relationship to be able to exist. Mm. Well said. And BC Nation, if you're struggling with that, or, you know, you really, you're hearing Martha Sue right now, but you just don't know how to get to that place. First off, that's normal. Forgive yourself, right? We all need outside accountability. So I'd like to invite you onto a spiritual clarity call with me if you'd like, and I can assist you with that. I can help you get to that place of deeper relationship with God and a very real relationship with God. I do it for others. I've done it for, uh, you know, with my, for myself, right? I, I have spiritual coaches that help me and see my blind spots and I give them permission to call me out on stuff. Why? Because I want my life to look a certain way, right? And I'm willing to do the inner work, whatever it takes for as long as it takes to do that, to get there. So if you're willing and you're at that place of being coachable, then reach out to me and jump on a spiritual clarity call. And listen, if you're not at that place of being coachable, that's fine. Keep doing what you're doing, but eventually get to the place of really looking and asking yourself, is it working? Yeah. Is it working? Because if it's not working, it's not going to work, <laughs> right? And so many times our mind lies to us and says, well, if you just apply more effort doing the thing that's not working, eventually it's going to work. That is not true. You got to really shift that approach. So go to josephwarren.net, schedule that call. I won't charge you for that. And I'll give you 30 to 45 minutes of my time. And I'll just pour into your life, God's plan for you. And we'll get you clarity. You'll walk away with clarity in one area of your life. You'll have a breakthrough. If you want that, you're ready for that. Go there now. Martha Sue, thank you for being on Broken Catholic. What's the best way for my listener to get in touch with you? Um. My email is Martha Sue at Bionic Golf Pro. Bionic like the woman, golf like you play, and pro like I am. Martha Sue at BionicGolfPro.com. And of course, they can reach me uh, at EmpoweredGolfers.com on the website. And the, the new school that I'm launching, just so that um, you know this, it's Own Your Game, Own Your Life. 
So it's the empowered golfer's formula to own your game, own your life. And that's pretty interesting that through your golf game and the teaching that you can actually take over those two things. I love it. So go follow up with Martha Sue. Go find her at empoweredgolfers.com. I like this woman. I like yeah. who she is. I like what she represents. I like her humility, how she shows up. And I think you're going to like her too, BC Nation. So Martha Sue, thanks for being on Broken Catholic. I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life, girl. Thank you. God bless you, Joseph. Thank you. Cheers. BC Nation, you cannot show up authentically in your life without building faith in your business. If you want the business side of that conversation, I have another podcast called First 100K, where I interview successful entrepreneurs about how they made their first $100,000, because that's where I believe 90% of you are stuck and you can't break through. Go to first100k.com to find out how. I'm Joseph Warren. You were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Have a blessed day and I'll see you right back here next week.